Uh, the Judicial Service Commission has uh, been barred from evaluating candidates for the position of a Chief Justice and the Supreme Court Judge, according to a High Court ruling. Now, the Commission is uh, fully dissatisfied with the ruling by the three judges delivered on Wednesday and intends to appeal to the Court of uh, Appeal against the whole decision. This appeal by the JSC challenging the decision decision will be had today by the Court of Appeal. However, uh, it is emerging that there is a petition against the JSC appeal. Now the question is, what does this mean for the whole process? Today we are putting our discussion on youth and politics in regards to the JSC and much more in regards to the BBI. The JSC has been stopped. The question is, will, it, will they win the, the appeal today at the Court of Appeal? Are they going to win this case? Time will tell. Remember, it, uh, there is a petition against this, J, this particular JSC appeal. What are the, implication, the legal implications in regards to this uh, uh, issue? Thank you so much for keeping it wide in the morning. Thank you so much for keeping it Y254. My name is Ram Maguko. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day in regards to youth and politics. I'm joined by none other than Kiragu uh, Muridi. He is the CEO of Vijana Mbele Foundation. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, as always, uh, we value your feedback. The hashtag as always is Y in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel. Remember, we are also live on Facebook. Y254 is where you can find us. Give us your thoughts as you continue with this conversation. Uh, I shall sample them up as uh, late, 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 later on uh, during this particular segment on youth and politics. Let's kick start this, uh, this show. And I would like to start with the, the issue of the JSC uh, before you head over to BBI. Uh, if we are having this petition so far, Kirabu, um, what does this mean for the whole process? Will it delay the process? Uh, 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 what are you looking forward to? Well, Ram, uh, I must say that uh, the office of the Chief Justice was, de was declared vacant by the acting uh, Chief Justice, that is uh, Philomena Mwilu. That means that uh, it's open space for uh, searching for a new substantive Chief Justice for Kenya. And now, these petitions that are coming into place, we can see a reflection that they are going to bring in a backlog, or rather they are going to delay, delay the process of bringing in a new Chief Justice in the Republic, the Republic of Kenya. And as I said earlier, that the office of the Chief Justice um, is brought in the Constitution under Article 161 of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. And we need a Chief Justice in the judiciary. It's high moment that we need uh, a new Chief Justice to bring in, to smoothen the process of the working out of the processes within the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's all about administrati administrating about the judiciary uh, facilitation uh, appointing new judges and now this chief justice is going to come up the office of the chief justice is going to come up with a lot of things that are going to bring change in the judiciary at large and remember a chief justice is not just a man on the ground mm -hmm. we need a person of high uh, moral character we need a person of impartiality remember a chief justice must have served as a, has must have a 15 years experience having served as a, the uh, a judge of the high court and also must be a very uh, experienced academic or jurist mm -hmm. and looking at the candidates we have in place uh, the likes of senior counsel philip philip mugo senior counsel fred katia and i think it's high time we bring in a chief justice mm -hmm. so that we can fasten the process mm -hmm. within the judiciary. And do you see this process coming up um, you know, so faster or slower? Based on these petitions that we're seeing so far, um, will it affect the process? Well, having petitions, uh, you remember petitions must take time because petitions will, take, will be taken into consideration first. By law, it's required by law that petitions must be taken into consideration before going out in the process. Mm. And within that time limit of uh, their consideration, this will bring in a backlog, or rather will slow the process of uh, bringing in a chief, uh, a chief justice in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking at the petition uh, by the JSC. Uh, do they have the, um, 
uh, ability of uh, you know pulling through uh, when winning this winning this in court well the judici the judicial service commission remember it comprises of a lot of commissioners those representing the public those representing the law society of kenya those representing the the supreme court like the de acting deputy chief justice and also those representing the public service mm -hmm. and i think if these people come into one common ground i think they're going to win this in in the corridors of uh, courts yes. mm -hmm. yeah i'm looking at the interviews of the judge for the supreme court it was uh, supposed supposed to uh, they were supposed to comment today the interview for the judge of the the, the, the supreme court do you see any legal legal issues that may arise in regards to you know uh, this particular uh, search for the supreme court judge i think uh, from my view, from where I sit, mm. I don't see any legal hurdles facing uh, the, the bringing in of uh, the Supreme Court judge. Mm. And I think these are critical issues that must be taken into at most consideration, uh, looking at the fact that the problems that are facing the judiciary at the moment. Mm. We don't have a chief justice at the, at the moment. We, we, we need new faces within judiciary so that uh, we can continue normal business. Mm. Um, uh, so the interviews that were done were meant to, uh, to go through the candidates' academic qualifications. Mm. Not so many questions were asked. Uh, they were looking into professional experience, understanding of the law and character. You know, how was this whole process according to you? How, you know, uh, um, when we were following these uh, interviews that were taking place for uh, all the, uh, the individuals that were interviewed, they ended on Friday. How was the whole process for you? What, is, what was your feel for the particular candidates that were interviewed? Well, Ram, from my view, I think the process was excellent and sufficient. Mm -hmm putting into consideration that uh, the, the, the Chief Justice, we must have uh, very legal experience. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, putting into consideration that uh, bringing in of a Chief Justice, this person must have high legal experience, mm -hmm. uh, high moral character, high integrity, high impartiality, a qualified and experienced jurist and uh, academic and also must also fit in to the requirements of the chapter 6 of the constitution on leadership and integrity mm -hmm. and looking at the candidates that were in place last week i think we can't lack uh, a better can a good candidate and a good person for the job mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the, the candidates that were there no, so, so many people are coming up to say that they are supporting this particular individual and the other. In your view, who was your best pick from all the, those that were interviewed for the position? Well, I must say, and we must also agree that there were controversies. I know we also... Yeah, this controversies were, uh, controversies were, were there. there. People coming up with personal issues or yeah. <laughs> might have a reason. And also on Twitter, I saw uh, memes. You know, Kenya is a country of memes. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a picture of uh, a candidate. Then uh, there's a barrier along the eyes, and mm -hmm. they're saying, this is the next chief justice, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, from my view, my, the best candidate for the job uh, is senior counsel friend Gatia, a very articulated, experienced legal counsel, and I think he's good for the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why would you pick him? Based on um, what precedents uh, would you? Would you say he's the best that he supersedes, or he's better than the other people who have also worked in the judiciary for years? Well, senior counsel friend Gatia, there's something about him that uh, he articulate, articulate issues uh, with a lot of conscience. And uh, to, be to be specific, we saw that he brought changes to the University of Nairobi uh, when he was um, some years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at his legal background, uh, he's a man of high uh, moral character, impartiality, and he's good for the job. All right. Well, based on this process, do you see any political undertones that were taking center, center stage in this whole search for this CJ? Of course, we saw some of the things taking center stage. Looking at, uh, you, you saw that the interviewees were being asked questions of independence. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, the, 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 
th some of the legal counsels that were on the hot seat were being asked questions of being interfered by the other arms of government. You remember, for a, a good example, like Senior Counsel Fred Gant here mm. was uh, represented Uhuru Kenyatta during the 2013 and 2017 cases, yeah. both in the ICC and also in the election petition. I remember, I remember he said that he should not be judged based on that particular case. Yeah. A, a lawyer can work for anyone. And uh, uh, that cannot work as a basis of interference when he is appointed of, uh, as a chief justice. Mm. I think he, he will work independently and do his job in, uh, in a very conducive manner as uh, expected by the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, we have the issue of the petition uh, that was put forward. And the petitioners included lawyers like Dan Sanomari. You know, they sought to stop the process of uh, uh, this whole process on grounds that Professor Olive Mugenda is illegally presiding over the recruitment process when he when she was uh, when she has actually no powers to act as the JSC chairperson in the absence of the Chief Justice. How true could this be? Well, it might be true. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at law is very different and critical in its reasons. We mm. see law and politics works differently. Mm. So, and I'm not a lawyer, but in mm. my view, mm. uh, uh, Olive Mogenda is uh, acting and also representing the public in the Judicial Service Commission. Should, the, should, should the, the place, should it be chaired by um, uh, the DCJ? Because I'm looking at what Dan Sanomari said, and he said this, that it has not been apparently clear why the current interviews are being chaired by Professor Mugenda in open defiance in, and in subordination of the constitutional and statutory dictates that demand uh, that uh, the JSC affairs should either be chaired by the CJ or the DCJ in his absence. So it shall actually be uh, uh, the DCJ phenomenon will instead of uh, Olive Mugenda. Well, that makes sense because the constitution enshrines that uh, the chief justice or rather uh, the acting chief justice or rather the deputy chief justice should be the head of uh, or ra rather should chair the the judicial service commission but we are seeing that uh, olive mogenda is chairing the commission but i think that's quite a bit of a hitch mm. but i think it's not that different from the facts considering also that olive mogenda is also a commissioner and i think mm -hmm. being a commissioner you you have a responsibility to take action uh, in the panel and i think that's not a big deal to take into place considering but the, but, but the dcj is there yeah we, the dcj also is ask, is asking questions in the in the panel mm -hmm. i don't see that much of a big issue to be to be in the limelight. All right, all right. Make sure that you, you, you engage with us in this conversation. The hashtag is why in the morning. Uh, really like give us your thoughts in regards to these issues. I want us to move to the next uh, story on the BBI. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Assembly and the Senate are expected to hold uh, special meetings to debate, among others, uh, the BBI initiative report this week. According to Ugunja Member of Parliament, Opio Wandani, he said this, and I quote, Let me say categorically, the enemies of BBI and, uh, by extension, the handshake, have found convenient allies in the Joint Parliamentary Committee of Legal Affairs. Uh, these elements are hell-bent on derailing the BBI process and eventually scuttling the handshake. They are throwing spanners in the works in order to achieve this end. Your thoughts in regards to this? Well, I think, uh, and uh, I've said this before, that you can't solve political bad manners through constitution amendments. And what these uh, main handlers of BBI are doing, they're trying to solve political bad manners through constitution amendments. And you're seeing at the BBI that things that BBI is prescribing are things that are yet to make constitution, constitutional sense to me. Uh, looking at uh, the demarcation of the 70 new constituencies, mm -hmm. we are bringing in a uh, very Execute uh, a very bloated uh, parliament that is going to be big relative to our economy's GDP. And I think it's high time that the handlers of BBI come back to the table, mm. goes to the people, because BBI belongs to the people. Constitutional amendments belong to the people, so that we can change some of the things. Looking at the, 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 
that thing of the the, constitu the constituencies, the demarcation of the constituencies. Mm -hmm. That is the re responsibility mandated by the IBC uh, under Article 89 of the Constitution. And I don't think it's such a big deal for a constitutional amendment to take up a responsibility of the IBC, which should, in real sense should be independent by itself. So you feel like there is a displacement of roles here? It's a dis displacement of roles. And I think uh, BBI should be very different uh, from interfering with the processes of an independent body like the IEBC. But then how should we separate all these issues? And when does the IEBC come, considering that we are looking for commissioners as we talk? Yeah. I think, you see, we are seeing, we, we have a very uh, congested political calendar at the moment. We are looking at uh, the BBI, we, ha we are looking at a referendum, we are looking at changing uh, the IBC body, and also these, all these things are going to bring, bring a backlog and uh, maybe delay the process of the polls mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. I think it's high time that we look at our priorities. And I think changing the constitution, the supreme law of the land, shouldn't be a priority at the moment. We have the coronavirus pandemic. We should first uh, look at the things that affect humanity at large. And I think, in my view, if I was to be asked, that we first carry out the, the next year polls, then the constitutional amendments can come later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how later should they come, in your view? Maybe after we are done with the elections, they can come later. Looking How at uh, How long? Uh, even after the day after election, they can come. <laughs> they can come. We have this as long as they just don't happen before the elections. Yeah, sure. These but, are but that is obviously not going to happen. It can happen. It can happen if you look at the realities. If we elected true leaders who look at humanity at large, looking at Kenya, we have a very bloated uh, debt. Uh, from China, and a BBI process requires a large amount of money. If we carry out the BBI process, then next year we have polls which are going to, ca to, to, to spend almost billions of money. I think that's not uh, agreeable. We must look at the realities and uh, the situation in our Kenya's economy. Mm -hmm. And I think we must bring this BBI after the 2022 elections. Well, 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 there is a little debate on whether they to reopen the document uh, to, um, for amendment before subjecting it to a referendum. What are your thoughts in regards to that? I think, well, that's agreeable uh, looking at uh, the parliament and the senate also have uh, the mandate to, to lobby for the reopening of the document uh, before the amendment. I think if it is done, then we articulate our issues and issues of all people. We are good to go. Considering that some are just saying that it's an issue of typos, full stops, where there are full stops, commas, uh, capital letters, is that an issue to consider? Well, Ram, these things that are happening are really putting into question the legality of this document called BBI. Uh, looking at the problems, we saw that, that three counties had the wrong document. Only 11 uh, counties had the original documents. These are issues that must be looked into place because we can't uh, pass a document that is uh, uh, less uh, of a legality, that is illegal, mm -hmm. that is not for the people. So we must bring a backyard by which this BBI is supported by all. Mm -hmm. Youth, women, people with disabilities, older men, students, children, everyone on board. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, earlier on we had um, a conversation with, uh, 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 with you and there was the issue of some claim that there are different documents that are circulating. You know, where could the confusion be when communities start saying that they have different versions of this particular document? Well, Ram, I can, I can agree on that because also I've never gotten an original document of uh, the BBI, the physical one, because uh, after the unveiling of the BBI, the president ordered that the BBI document will be brought to the people. And if you ask me, I've gone to the ground. P 
people don't have that BBI document. So I can support the controversy that the document is illegal and uh, they are working on two different documents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are seeing that th they are starting blame games now, saying that there is interference uh, from the DP Ruto's camp mm -hmm. on the processes of the BBI. Yeah. And I think we should not involve the de deputy president in the process of the BBI. Remember the BBI brothers are His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta and also the His Excellency former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. So if there is a problem regarding BBI, I think they should solve the problem between uh, themselves instead of bl uh, bringing into place uh, blame games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the issues of uh, the Joint Committee uh, of the Senate and the National Assembly, which consider the, the document has, uh, you know, they, they, they were saying that they have broken the stalemate in regards to uh, to this uh, and the issue, uh, and, and because this stalemate was scuttling the BBI process, the biggest headache at the moment is the executive. Uh, of the referendum, which you know, which set a timeline that is very tight. Do you feel like this timeline is possible for us to meet it? It's very impossible to to to, to meet this timeline. In July. In July, mm. it's very impossible. Remember, these constitutional amendments requires a lot of facilitation, both administrative, both monetary, and also individual participation mm. and I think this timeline is too small to fit in and bring a constitution amendment come uh, July which is a few months to come. Well I'm looking at uh, Lugari member of parliament Ayub Sabula's comment in regards to this. He says that he wants the IBC, the BBI secretariat, the defunct BBI steering committee, the government press, uh, the government's a printer and uh, speakers of uh, affected assemblies to be summoned by the joint team to establish the origin of uh, this confusion. Uh, is this a possible roadmap towards getting a solution? Well, I think that's a lost roadmap, uh, putting into consideration that uh, the BBI was originally brought into place by the BBI secret secretariat. Mm -hmm. Then it was given to the IBC. It's mm -hmm. not the IBC who came uh, for the BBI. It's the secretariat that gave the BBI to the IBC. Mm -hmm. So putting on blame games of to whether it's IBC or other other parties that are bringing into this confusion of uh, the BBI, I think it's not a good way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, these promoters of BBI should really ask themselves, is there a problem within them? instead of bringing in uh, shame uh, in the limelight of a precious document, a, a, purport, a purported precious document mm. uh, that was unveiled uh, uh, last year. Right, right. I want us to bring this conversation to a close there. And now let, let, let me just read a few comments on our social media platform. Remember, we have many who are watching us from different parts of the country and beyond. Uh, let me head over to, I'm seeing this is... Uh, Roslyn and Sama, he's watching from uh, Kisumu. Thank you very much, Rose, for that. Watching the show, loving it. I'm seeing this is Caleb and Sama. Uh, very interesting conversation there. Enjoying the show, watching you from Kisarian. All right. This is Anne and Sama. Enjoying the show, loving it. Uh, thank you so much for bringing uh, it is uh, from bringing BBI into this conversation. It is an interesting conversation. Uh, what we need to do as a nation is to support uh, ideas that bring change into the country, not to bring politics in everything and bring confusion, because Kenyans right now are in need of solutions and not more problems. Mm -hmm. Interesting comment there. Mm -hmm. You agree with that, right? I agree with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh huh. My internet is kind of slow today, but uh, thank you so much, everyone, for, 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 for finding time to tune in. Let me give you final, a, 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 a time to say a final word in regards to this. The whole issue of the GSC and the BBI uh, at large, just uh, in summary, what should be our take home from you? Well, I think, from my view, mm -hmm. the GSC uh, last week carried out very excellent and sufficient uh, interviews mm. for the candidates uh, who applied for the job. I think that I have uh, high hopes that we are going to have 
a new chief justice that we, we, we will we'll change the face of the judiciary, mm -hmm. will solve the perennial pro problem of uh, lack of independence mm -hmm. within the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Also on the parts of the BBI, BBI changing the supreme law of the land mm -hmm. shouldn't mm -hmm. be a priority of the moment mm -hmm. in Kenya right now. Right. We are facing so many challenges in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have the coronavirus, we have a poor economy. And I think if faster we, we must build the economy, uh, uh, do away with the coronavirus, then bring in constitutional amendments. Mm -hmm. And I repeat again, you can't solve political bad manners through constitutional amendments. And we must rethink, bring all the people to the table. Mm -hmm. My internet is back. I'm seeing. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to read a few more so that you can, you can have your feedback. Because this Kijana Wakibaki and Asama are watching from Lona Town. But now, they, uh, get this. They know Spark is saying, Hello, guys, BBI can't stop this due. Uh, BBI can't stop. This is due to. Uh, this is because there is no opposition in the government. All opposition have joined the government in Kenya and Aumia. Well, I think. Uh it's a good take for the no, uh -huh. because at the moment we lack the opposition in government. And a true democracy doesn't work properly without uh -huh. the opposition. Uh -huh. So the only people we are seeing uh, in the opposition, we are seeing uh, civil society. We have the Katiba, uh, Linda Katiba initiative by Mother Karua and uh, uh -huh. Dr. David D. So I think at the moment we are in a weak democracy that works without a uh, proper uh, opposition. And you remember opposition uh, works and is in place so that it can be able to ensure that government works efficiently. All right, thank you so much, my brother, for, for joining and finding, for finding time to have this conversation with me. I was with Kirago Muredi, who is the CEO of Jana Belle Foundation. Kirago, asada sana. Thank you, sir. Nashukuru sana. As always, we value your feedback. Thank you so much to everyone who has been participating with us, especially on our online platforms. I can't read uh, all of your feedback, but uh, we appreciate your presence. That brings us to the end of this particular conversation on youth and politics. Coming up next, we are, I shall be joined by Dr. Lawrence Ofunja. The conversation that is coming up is an issue of creative and critical thinking. How deep does it go? Don't go too far. We'll be back in a bit. This is why in the morning.